have today, I have Blue House with me. Blue House is a former member of hard rock band Stone Giant. Uh, he is also the co-owner of his own production company, Low Sweet Records. Yes. Uh, Blue House is about to release on Low Sweet Records. His self-titled debut solo album uh, comes out tomorrow. It's exciting. Yeah, tomorrow, Friday. Yeah, it's killer. Uh, and this is some tasty, tasty stuff. Uh blues soul and a whole lot of rock and roll uh it's it's a beautiful record it really really is i'm, uh, I'm glad you had a chance to to take a listen to it before it was released and yeah and uh like it, it. it's a real gift uh you know it's it's something that people will appreciate uh tremendously i think for for yeah the musicality is is tremendous uh you know it's not your simple rock and roll album that's for sure <laughs> although there's although it rocks and uh but there's there's so much more to it uh it's mm -hmm. really really great and i'm excited to talk to you about it for sure that's awesome uh, um now let's start from the beginning with stone giant uh there was a guy named sebastian fernandez uh in that band uh, <laughs> that guy doesn't exist anymore <laughs> right exactly um what happened to him what what inspired that name change and and how did you get blue house well yeah i mean most of my days were with stone giant i graduated berkeley in 2014 and then we we moved to new york city with the band and we had some great times you know we we got into lola palusa argentina and chile back in 2016 mm -hmm. Um, so we went down, down there and, and the shows were just great. The butterfly effect from that started creating a whole scene, you know, so we did a, we also played for Jimmy Page at, at Berkeley commencement concert. So we did a bunch of stuff, but at some point, you know, people change, life changes, music changes. So I just kind of went along with what I was feeling in the moment. So half of 2018, I decided to, to just like put a pause into the other project and decided to go solo. And, and now here I am and actually blue house, but now it's blue house with a Z. It was blue house with an S um, used to be a band that I had in Argentina when I was like 17. So oh. that was like the first rock and roll band I had. So this moment I see it kind of like a rebirth for me, you know, it's like a new moment. First time I'm going solo. So I said, Let's go back to that name that made me dedicate my life to rock and roll. So I had to like text my friends from my, from my teenage years and, and be like, right. hey, I'm stealing the name, you know. <laughs> um, what they say? I, they said, okay, man, just keep it alive. You know, we, we haven't been using it for, for years. Cool. Um, so, and, and Blue House is not a, uh, it's not like a band name. It's actually like a, like an artist name, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So I changed from from Sebastian to Blue House, kind of like a slash situation, you know, like right. sounds like a band, but it's actually the artist name. So that's how yep. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm I love sorry it. If there's outside noise, you know, the, the, the world is I, the world's active. That's good. The world's active. You can hear it in the background. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. After what we've been through with uh, with COVID and and there's there's been a, a little too much silence. So uh, it's good to see people active and hear a little noise. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, now, now I know you grew up in Argentina. You moved here when you were 20 years old. Uh, yes. Now that's you know that's you're pretty established at 20 years old. Um, attended Berkeley and graduated. Um, you were mentored by a pretty good guitar player named Jimmy Page. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, so tell me about those early years and why you decided to move to the U.S. At you know that's not a late age, but you know yeah, it's not yeah. when you're 12, uh, it's a big, pretty big difference. Uh, what what does uh, what made that decision for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was born in Argentina. But I have a strong connection with the U.S. because my, I have my family is American. You know, I have uncles, cousins, my brother. I've been coming here since I'm like two years old, you know. But it was only when I graduated high school. And I, I used to go to American schools in Argentina. So it's like I'm not your typical Argentinian culture person, right? Um, right. So... I used to play a lot of soccer, you know, like every Argentinian, you know, I was huge in soccer. 
most of my teenage years, I was like, I'm, I'm going to try and be a soccer player, you know? Mm -hmm. but, the, but the moment that I had to like really go and try for it, something happened and I started listening to, to Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin and I formed the band and I started playing live and I just said, what is this feeling that, that I'm seeing, you know, and what I feel in the live situation. So I kind of dropped that whole soccer situation and I just decided to, to go for music. And I stayed in Argentina two years playing with this band, Blue House. Mm -hmm. um, and most of my friends, since I went to American school, they were already in the US and in Boston and BU and in all the Northeastern Emerson. Some were at Berkeley too. And they were telling me, man, you gotta come to Berkeley, right? And, and just kind of like continue your career here. So I moved, I went to audition to Boston, I got in. And then at 20, I began Berkeley. And, and and that was it you know I, I went to berkeley with with a very clear idea of what i wanted which was form a rock and roll band and, and tour and, and kind of do those things and the first week of berkeley orientation i met the keyboard player of stone giant and we started that band since the very very beginning we had different players different drummers i had to kick out friends you know that, that's horrible right, you know? right. <laughs> but we were with like a mission you know um, yeah. And, you know, so until we find the, the complete lineup and, and that's how it started. I just kind of like left home in Argentina to to pursue music here in the U.S. But it's not like I feel that I'm away from home because all my family is here and I've been here for more than 10 years. And wow. and even though I was in Argentina, I was always listening to classic rock, you know, from England, from the U.S., the blues. Right. So I'm very, I'm always very connected to that yeah and that shows in your music i mean it's it's got a big blues influence uh there's that soul almost revivalist kind of uh you know uh it's it's, it's just uplifting too uh it's just really uplifting stuff um you know and i try to think um what you know people will ask me uh you know what you listen to today and i'll say blue house <laughs> yeah you know, i'll say well what's it sound like who's blue house <laughs> uh, right right and i say you know he's a guitar player what you know i have my own thing of what i would say um what would you say what what's the right answer to tell that person about who's blue house yeah what does it sound like um <laughs> there you go <laughs> that's how it sounds yeah but yeah i mean i'm very influenced by classic rock and the blues and the main reason of of, of going solo and, and starting this project is to fully connect to that um don't get me wrong stone giant years were great the music we did was was very powerful we put a lot of energy into it the production, if you listen to that album, is also very nice. We, we recorded it at Water Music Studios in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is like a very nice studio. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a, a more harder rock, darker sound, you know. Yeah. So when you work with people, uh, it's kind of like a democracy, right? So I, might, I may bring something that sounds very bluesy. But when you put it in this filter of other three minds that may be like other music as well, it becomes something else than when you originally brought to the table. Yeah. So with Blue House, why I, what I originally bring to the table, which is more blues and rock, just stays the way that it is. And I try to, to, to be more, more loyal to it. Um, yeah, that, that control is, is really nice for the solo yeah. artist that can do it. Uh, you know, not, yeah. every, not yeah. everybody can do it and, and you do it very well uh, on your own. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. I, I spend like, I've been writing since the beginning of 2019, I wrote like 200 demos Wow! on, on my computer. Um, not finished, not the songs finished, not the lyrics, right. you know, but I have two, I had 200 ideas that then just became 13 ideas, which is the album, you know, um, but yeah, I, I just have more control over it. I also like try to like really focus on the songwriting aspect of the album. I studied songwriting in Berkeley. So we're, we were like constantly analyzing pop tunes and rock tunes. And not to think that music has a rule, but you definitely start um, learning a few tools that actually work. 
right. and you see them in, in famous songs and like, okay, this is why it works. And some, some of these rules that you learn in songwriting actually do work. So I try to, to connect with that learning, you know, and the hooks and the lyrics and the memorial melody and the, and the song forms, not, not just a jam with a guitar solo, just have it have like a, an identity of its own. So, yeah. so once I had like the jams, it, it starts like that, right? I might be riffing or whatever, but then I need to like transform this into a, like a three minute, four minute map. Right. So, so I really put some time into that. Uh, yeah. It shows. It shows. It's it's really tasty stuff. It really, really is. I'm really glad. Uh, yeah, it, it's great. And uh, you know, when I think about with the sound, I, I get a lot of like a that fuzzy guitar tone. That Z, it's, it reminds me of ZZ Top a little bit. Uh, We're listening it, a lot to ZZ Top early albums. Uh, while I was producing because I was trying to like imitate the drum sounds they were doing, the the guitar sounds that Billy was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's just something about those like old CC Top records, you know, like the song uh, Just Got Back From Baby, Jesus Just just yeah. Left Chicago. Like, those early tunes were yeah, so cool, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, they had that blues, but that has that grit of that fuzzy guitar. Yeah. I like that. And you bring that for sure. But with a more modern feel, it's sort of like Jack White. Um, it reminded me a little bit of that where, you know, that kind of a little bit more modern feel to it. Uh, that's yeah, you try to make it more your own, I guess, mm-hmm. um, to keep it, to keep it, uh, innovating itself, you know, because we, I mean, with stone giant, it was happening the same. We sounded rock and roll, but like, I'm not sure if I could like pin, you know, there's bands that you're like. This band sounds like Guns N' Roses. Right. This band sounds like the Beatles. You know, I don't, I, I, I don't know what exact band I can pinpoint and be like, I sound exactly like this person. You know. Yeah. No, I, I couldn't do that. Yeah, I listen to it, and there's a little bits of everything. You know, if you bring all of that in there, which makes it a really fun thing to listen to. It's new, but yet it still harkens back to certain things that you love. Uh, you know, like that ZZ Top stuff. Um, so yeah, that's really, really brilliant uh, way to to present yourself. And what inspires you to write? Like, you know, you had all those ideas. Uh, do you do that while you're watching TV or looking out the window, or you know, do you have to be in a certain place when you when you write? Um, I mean, it, it it really varies, you know. You, you, you got to keep your mind open the whole time, you know, because an idea can just appear out of nowhere. It might appear just sitting in the couch and you grab the acoustic and something happens. But usually, yes, usually I do sit down and write and like I, I put it in my mind and I, you know, I, I get the temple ready. I have a whiskey or whatever that, that's going to like start getting me there, you know, and I just start right. writing ideas. It usually starts with like, if, if it's a situation that I'm not writing with an actual band, because Stone Giant was like all the time in the rehearsal space and the ideas were very like in the moment we were start, start jamming and a riff comes here and then you put the melody and it just happens organically. Right. But in a situation where you're not with the band rehearsing or like during the pandemic, you know, it, it was usually like just go on the garage band or the logic or these programs that everybody can have and, it, and they're easy to learn um you know put, just put a drum loop with the tempo that 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 you want that sometimes you want to write something fast something you want to sometimes you want to write a ballad or, or a specific groove and i would start like that and then i would crank up my guitar and i started riffing and started riffing and once i have a main idea i start okay this this can be the intro then if this is the intro then the verse i should bring the dynamic down and then i know that eventually i need to explode in a chorus that has like a catchy melody and everything just boosts and then we go down again so i was i think i think about it like that and once i'm done with everything i i even like compose melodies uh just mumbling you know I don't worry about words when I'm writing melodies because that can that can influence the melodies that I make if I'm limited to 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 words, yeah. right? So I just start doing melodies, and once I have a melody that I like, I think about what I want to talk about in that song, 
once I know what I want to talk about in that song and I have the demo and the melody, I put lyrics into the melody and then I give it meaning, you know? Some other people like Bob Dylan or, or anybody that's more connected to the lyric part of writing, they might have a journal full of lyrics. Right. And I don't know, this love lyrics need this kind of sound. And they start from the lyrics. I usually uh. start from the music just because I grew up more on, on Led Zeppelin than Dylan. Right. You know? I grew up more on Eric Clapton than Bruce Springsteen, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I look more for the sounds. Yeah. And I, and I tend to listen that way. And I, I you know, there are different listeners uh, the same way. I think, you know, uh, I hear the music and then I concentrate on the lyrics. If uh -huh. I concentrate on the lyrics when I listen, I don't get the full effect. Uh, it's just gotcha. I just, Some people go for the lyrics, right? I want that, mm -hmm. that phrase that's going to like change my life. Right. But maybe you, you like more like ACDC. They have great lyrics, but you go to ACDC because it makes your body move. Right. Yeah, right. totally. So it it's, just motivates you to go out and, 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 and conquer the world. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. doubt about it. No doubt. Uh, um, what, I mean, what do you want to, you know, I, I realize the, this record, I listen to this record. I hear purify my soul uh, every day. Um, keep on rolling. Probably my favorite song the, on the record. Just nice. so great. Um very uplifting, like I was saying, uh, almost spiritual. Um, you know, that is a big part of this record. It, was that very intentional on your part? Um, you know, how much of that did you want to translate to the audience? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the record has has different kind of different styles around the album. Um, it's primarily more hard rock. Like once you get to the so we actually thought about it with, a, with an old school mind, right? So we thought about the, the album being like a, like a, a two-sided uh, vinyl, mm -hmm. right? So the first six songs of the album, you have like a more dynamic thing going on and the reggae and the Purify My Soul and the slow songs with loving and the keep on rolling. But then from Generation Calling to the end, it starts getting more, way more hard rock. Right. So it, it, it's kind of like a two sided thing, you know, for someone that wants more diversity and then the second side for the more like hard rock, rock and roll people, you know, um, yeah. I have to do both. I'm I'm connected to like this chill stuff, but I need the the moving stuff, especially when I'm going to start playing this this album live. We'll see what brings the most energy out of it you know but definitely the tracks that you mentioned are the ones that i also feel are like the main tracks uh purify my soul opens the album every day closes the album mm -hmm. i did that on purpose because it's like purify my soul every day yeah you know? yeah uh, and that's what i mean it's it's uh it's it's spiritual not in a preachy way uh mm -hmm. for me um and i'm not a real big lyric guy uh, but I, I hear what you're saying in these songs. Uh, they, they speak to me. Um, and that's very, that's what makes it great for me. Um, it, it speaks to me in a, in a spiritual way, in an uplifting way. There is a positivity to this record uh, without, like I say, without being real preachy and, you know, that's cool. No, that's, that's cool that, that you got that feeling. And that's definitely what I tried to do. Okay. I was like being preachy towards myself, you know, like this whole like new, new, new moment, you know, new beginning, uh, yeah. change habits, become a better person, become a better musician. So it all started with the, the whole concept of the album is purify my soul, right? Mm -hmm. You're asking the, the Lord to purify your soul from past habits or past situations or whatever was going on in new york city during my years you know <laughs> right clean so, clean start here we go clean start <laughs> you know so I, I i'm very i'm i'm very honest in the in the lyrics mm -hmm. you know kind of telling like opening the album like like the album kind of opens as if i'm like okay deciding to go solo so i'm like i feel like i'm not myself so i know a change is going to come Lord, come purify my soul. Let's keep going, you know? Yeah. 
And then the whole album is is just like that. Loving is like, of course, the typical all you need is love. Keep on rolling is about the pandemic, but we're gonna keep on rolling. We're gonna we gotta keep on moving. Every day is like you're already purified, so you're like in this light every day, you know. Yeah. Um, it's it's a of this song. This songs just kind of like tackle that that concept of purify my soul, but like in different. Give it back is is another track that I released that's on the album, yeah. but it's also the same. Like I'm talking to someone that has lost their light, so I'm gonna give it back to them, yeah. you know. So yeah. they all have like this this like positivity, and I think I'll, I'll just carry that message in my career overall, you know. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, you know, it's great to hear, especially at this time in the world. Uh, you know, there's a lot of darkness out there. And uh, yeah. like I say, I put this record on and, you know, I get that musicality of it, and the blues and soul and stuff and the, the rock and roll from it. But I, I get that positive message and that uh, uplifting thing. And that was great to hear. You know, I love that mix for sure. Uh, th- tell me about the players on the album. Um, th- the sax on celebration oh, yeah. wow that's just killer <laughs> uh, cool. actually listen to everything <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah um yeah and you i mean i i think you know people are going to get this record and they they're not going to be able to help themselves you know there <laughs> is it's a smorgasbord of sound you know there's so much sound on the record uh so much interesting stuff uh, i think do you have a, a hammond on there did i hear a hammond b3 on there yeah, we, we, we recorded, I mean, we did a bunch of stuff at the studio, you know, we, we recorded synths and we recorded pianos. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to play that that celebration live and just let the saxophone player just solo for three minutes. <laughs> Total. People, like, tell you to stop, you don't stop, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I got uh, Pepe on drums, which was the drummer of Stone Giant, my other band. He lives right. in L.A we're still very connected. He's probably one of the best rock drummers that I played with. He was like the best rock drummer in Berkeley when we were studying. So, so it was cool to, to, to that, keep him. That, then, says, um, that says a lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're There's still some pretty good drummers at Berkeley. <laughs> yeah. No, no. He was, he, for, for rock stuff, he's, he's definitely a great musician. Yeah. He, he understands everything, you know, like, I, I play a riff and like already he starts jamming the way that I imagine in my mind how those drums have to sound. Then for guitars and lead vocals, I recorded everything myself. On the live shows, I'm going to have a second guitarist, but on the record, I just do it all myself. Okay. Um, then on bass, I have my friend Pablo, which came to Berkeley with us too. He's actually, I don't know if a lot of Americans know this artist, but uh, have you heard of Ricky Martin ever? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. yeah. So he's the play. He's been the bass player of Ricky Martin for like the past four years. Yeah. So wow. He, he tours the world with Ricky and everything. And that's that's. So a- then I bring him to Blue House to 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 drop the Latin stuff for a bit and and, and play some rock and roll. Wow, and, that's pretty cool because Ricky Martin is a different. He's not a rock and roll guy. He's not a rock and roll guy. Right, and uh, so you and that's great to have a guy like that who's not. Yeah. You know, as in the has played that outside. Exactly, world. and the, the bass, the bass that you hear in the album is not exactly like your typical rock and roll bass played with pick and the root notes. Like he yeah. brings some funky stuff into it. He mm-hmm. brings to the table, like in the reggae. You know, you gotta you gotta be a tight player. You can't just like. Yeah. So, so he definitely brought that here. Uh, then we played. What else we got? My friend David, he recorded uh, the keys. Then I had uh, backing vocals, this uh, gospel singer here from church in Miami called Mariel Epps. We invited her to the studio for from a connection that I had. And she sounded great. She recorded like six songs in the album, like the backing vocals. And after the recording, we started talking. And I didn't know that she was, she used to do backing vocals for Bowie, for Michael Jackson, for Prince. And she just stayed in the studio after hours, just like telling us the, this crazy stories when she was like young and and and, and singing with these people. Yeah, and, um, that's beautiful. And, and then the, the saxophone player is a guy called Travis Bridges, also from 
from here from Miami, he he killed it. He came to the studio, we showed him the song, and boom, he got it. Yeah, that um, that just it, slayed me when I heard it. Yeah, I was like, wow. That's and just, then just one more track called "Generation Calling" has violins, mm -hmm. which that's my friend from Berkeley too, Stefano, great player as well. Um, yeah, and yeah, and then we produced it ourselves with my company, Lucid Records. We mixed it ourselves, and then we sent it to master to this guy called Brian Lucy. I've been working with him for some years now. He's, mm -hmm. he's. I mean, anybody who wants to master rock and roll, you go to Brian. He's done like Royal Blood. He's done the nice. the Brothers album of La Keys. Yeah, he's done he. Liam Gallagher's The Wall of Glass. He's done some great stuff, you know. So yeah. I just sent him and I I never even ask him for like edits. It's like right. I know what he sends me that first time is done, you know. Yep. And that's a great feeling to have a guy like that where you can yeah. trust him to do what you need him to do. Uh you yeah, know, what, what, I'm, what, what am I gonna tell him? He won like all the Grammys <laughs> with the Black Keys album, and I'm gonna be like, hey Brian, change this now. Right. Like, <laughs> you do what you do and you do what you do and yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> very cool um now uh, tell me a little bit about jimmy page uh you know there's that mentored by jimmy you, you know you you've you went to his home uh you talked with him for a, a you know extensive period of time um mm -hmm. you know what did he bring to your playing i mean not knowing him from before, he already brought a lot to my playing because I was, the moment that I got really connected to music and I said, you know, this is what I want to do. I was watching those Led Zeppelin concerts, you know, at the Albert Hall, the Song Remains the Same concert at the Madison. Mm -hmm. uh, I love watching live, live shows and, and videos of live, sh live shows, you know. Sometimes I spend more time looking at live shows on YouTube than actually listening on, to Spotify. Right. Because there's just something about that raw thing that the live show gets to me, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I had this, like, I had a, a, a very personal connection when I was a teenager to his family. And I ended up becoming, you know, close to them. I went to London to meet him. Um, and then he came to my graduation in Berkeley and we did that whole concert for him. He was, like, in the fourth row and we were just playing Led Zeppelin. And that was a surreal moment. Yeah. But... I guess it gave me a lot of confidence from, from an early age as well, because, because that first trip that he saw me play in London, I went for 10 days and it was only the last day that we got really connected. You know, it right. was, before it was like, hi, hi, good morning. How are you doing? Very basic, very basic. Right. And the last day he was in the living room. This was when I was 19. Mm -hmm. And I was going to the airport a few hours from, from that. I knew like, okay, like I came here, I did the connection, but it's not what I imagined. You know, I didn't right. even take a picture with Jimmy or anything, or, or right. I haven't even talked to him for more than 10 minutes. And I've been here like 10 days. Right. right? So I looked at, him, at his son, he was younger at the, at the moment. He had some drums and I said, let's go play. I brought my guitar to London. Oh, nice. We just started jamming and I just started playing, let's set in tunes and all to make some noise and and all of a yeah. sudden the, the, the door opens and he comes <laughs> Jimmy like what are you guys doing you know <laughs> and he literally stayed there's a there's a video of this that I don't know where it is oh. somebody was filming this situation me 19 playing and Jimmy was literally like up close there just watching my fingers you know wow. and after that he saw that I played the blues he saw everything and then you know he really liked my playing he started talking to me he offered to take me to the airport. So that's how we spent like an hour in the, in the car, just talking about everything. Right. And that just gave me like a cool confidence. Like, okay, this is like this person that I, and, and you, you also think like, how did, did I, did I end up here? Right. Like yeah. what happened that I ended up like out of all the opportunities, I ended up meeting this person that is connected to Jimmy and, yeah. and, and and yeah, I guess it just gave me like a, like a magic, like go on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. The, the wizard yeah. came and it's like, okay. You're going, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> that, that blessing of you're on the right road. 
you know that's it's pretty pretty great yeah uh, yeah yeah uh every photo i see of you uh with a guitar if it's not acoustic it's an sg it's an sg uh, yeah uh is the, that's the primary guitar that you're playing that's the primary guitar i have for more than 10 years it's been around and i've played most of the shows with that um yes i love that combination the sg gibson with with an orange amp you know and i barely use pedals i'll use like a booster or maybe like an octafaz but that's it yeah because i was gonna say the sound on the record for most of the stuff has this crunch to it you know it has a real bite i uh, it's a really cool kind of fuzzy kind of sound you, you don't really use a pedal for that no i i, I recorded everything i I knew I wanted it to make to sound raw. So mm -hmm. all the guitars are straight from an orange amp with the crank distortion of the amp and the, and the Gibson. Wow. Uh, at cool. most, um, an Octafast pedal, but, yeah. but yeah, it's just raw sound and, you know, miking the, the amp because nowadays you, you can also like plug the guitar to the, to the pro tools or whatever that you're right. using and just use those sounds but when you mic an amp the sound just opens up yeah there there is a, an organic thing that happens with that it gives it breathing room and everything else it's just a really and that's you know that was another thing i listened to this record and there's there's some air in it you know everything i hear that's digital now has this kind of closed in very yeah so compressed yeah, uh, this has some air, you know, it if, breathes. There's nothing, if you think about it, there's nothing live going on. It's all like a compressed sound and you put everything compressed. But when you're recording, when you record like your vocals a certain way, where you record the drums all mic'd up and you catch the, the, the audio of the room, or when you record yeah. everything in that approach, then you give air to the recording because it was recorded in an actual place and the room that you record is going to influence that sound as well so yeah. so that's why it opens up compared to like this pop tunes that just sound like a like we printed it you know right right yeah and and for some things that you know that needs to be like that of but for, for this you know bluesy hard rock thing it's you know it's i can hear the room and i love exactly. that you need to hear the room when you're listening to to rock yeah it's so cool it's it's great it has a real life feel uh now you know i watched the videos uh really cool stuff um I, and i see a lot of photos they have mm -hmm. the name anna i don't want to i'm going to screw it up. what what is the last name An godoneo godoneo okay uh, yeah, exactly. I, I see that who is anna godoneo she, she's my girlfriend from brazil she she used okay. to she was here during the whole pandemic and now she's back in Brazil, but she, I mean, she's a rock photographer. She's great. She does uh, a lot of content for me. She still helps me. Um, she's a rock and roller like us, you yeah. know? Um, so she's been helping me with, with a bunch of my content. Now also my, my brother and my sister are helping me out because they're in advertising and they know about videos and photos. Mm -hmm. um, we're currently finishing the music video for Keep On Rolling, which is going to be like the main video. It's going to come out like a week or two after the album. Um, but yeah, the music videos is something that I still need to like completely master, you know, and like do that whole production. You know, sometimes I put more emphasis on the music. Um, but the music videos in my case are still a working progress and they're going to keep evolving i guess what you see there as as for videos so far are like the first video we did it very homemade uh, walking in miami and with public domain videos mm -hmm. the second video give it back we didn't have a chance for a production because it was pandemic so right. you can see like a, more than 100 people that i was reaching out to or people that were reaching out and we did like a homemade edit of like people yeah. in quarantine just vibing to the song yeah it's fun it is it's a fun video uh, you know, I purify my soul has that. It has a grit, you know, you playing on the street there and that black and white high contrast, it yeah. really fits the song beautifully. It's really well done. Um, mm -hmm. You have your own label. 
uh, Low Sweet Records. Is that strictly for you? Um, do- Low Sweet Records is not actually a label. is is uh, yeah. a music production company, right? Okay. So, so we are music producers, and we write and produce and record for for ourselves and for other artists. Okay. Uh, as well, the actual label that I'm releasing the, the album is called After College Music, and we're releasing the album via the Orchard, which is Sony Music's distribution label. Yeah. It's not a record deal; it's a distribution deal with the Orchard, you know. But Low Street Records is it, is more like the the production, like music producer uh, situation. Okay, yeah. Are you uh, you're going to be producing other artists? Yes, I already produce other artists and I'll keep producing other artists. It's something that kind of started happening when I moved to Miami. I wasn't considering becoming a music producer, but I've been exploring it, you know, and mm-hmm. and there's a point too that I was work I was trying to work with other producers when I was thinking to to write my album. And at one point, honestly, at least now at the beginning, I felt like I was the one to do the job myself right. until I find a producer that just like really understands what I want to do and takes me to the next level. But I feel like I'm going to be very, I'm going to monopolize that a lot. You know, I'm going <laughs> to be like the music producer right. moving forward unless there, you know, Rick Rubin calls me up and, <laughs> and what am I going to say to that? <laughs> right. That's uh, kind of one of those like the engineer situation where, you know, hey, yeah. you do what you do and uh you pretty do it pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it's great that you know what you want and you know how to get it. Uh, and that's, you know, the production skill is such a major thing. Yeah, it's it's important to know how to take an idea from your mind to an actual finished song mm-hmm. and and there's an entire process that that goes through that 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 sometimes what is like very simple or like a given for me not everybody like understands what you need to do and once you understand those steps of how to take an idea to a finished song then like i going back to the songwriting rules there is a mm-hmm. map there is a way to do it that when you fall you can break the rules around the map right you can take a shortcut or, or take the long road back home or whatever, but but there is definitely a schedule and a, mm-hmm. yeah. and a procedure that if you follow it, it's, it, it works. It can work. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, you mentioned touring. You mentioned taking this on the road. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're going to come see me in Chicago here? Oh, my God. I hope I hope that's Lollapalooza next year. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty cool. You've yeah, done one already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i did Lollapalooza in argentina and chile now right. i need to i need and some a lot of my friends played uh, the lola now this weekend cool uh, friends from a band called migrant motel and then some other friends that they were just session players for musicians right. um but yeah i definitely want to take the this on tour you know playing live is it, it's what fills me up especially from like taking a break from my other band that I was playing all the time to now this, I feel like when I'm on the road or when I get back into a festival or something, I'll start feeding off that energy, you know, and then it's just a matter of like, keep it constant and keep it coming. Um, I'm going to jam in the van. I don't know if you know about them. Uh, So they're a a channel based in LA and you basically jam in a band and they record it for YouTube. Gary Clark, a bunch of people have been there. It's kind of like this tiny nice. death situation, but like in a band. It's called Jam. Nice. So I'm going to LA there to present the album. It's more like a, like a video. Um, yeah. And then I'll probably do some strategic shows this year, you know, uh, until yeah. we, we see the actual full possibility of, of, of jumping on a tour, opening for, for a tour joining festivals you know it, yeah it's all going to start coming back now yeah and man, chicago I, is definitely a, a spot that i need to go yeah you do I, uh yeah I'd, I'd love to come see you and 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 hang out that would be great for sure absolutely yeah uh hey blue house i appreciate you my friend um Maybe too. Yeah, let me let me tell everybody where they can find you. Bluehouse.com. That's B-L-U-H-A-U-Z 
youtube.com uh search youtube all your socials for blue house and mm-hmm. uh get the self-titled debut record coming out tomorrow uh it's pretty special stuff uh blue house again thanks so much man scott thank you very much for having me and your kind words and it motivates me to see that that you felt something from the album even oh. before we, we, we talked so very much let, let's keep it moving let's hope yeah. this just the beginning and and i'll see you in chicago for for a nice whiskey and some rock and roll (laughs) that would be so cool yeah i'm looking forward to it my friend it's it's gonna happen all right we'll be in touch all right thank you You too take care Bye bye